So let's start with the non-compete. That's probably one of the most common questions. Is this non-compete enforceable? So can you explain then what would be an example of a punitive termination clause and what would you as counsel advise to try and get as the stipulations for a good exit going into a job? Gotcha. Yeah. So the primary leverage and exit pieces of a contract is the non-compete, the termination clause, and then non-solicit clauses for employees and patients. So let's start with the non-compete. That's probably one of the most common questions. Is this non-compete enforceable? And that's really the wrong question because if it's in the contract, it's written in the contract, you should assume that it is enforceable and plan your exit strategy accordingly. You should never sign a contract saying, well, it doesn't matter in here because it's not enforceable anyways. That's just, that's wrong. Okay. Even if there are some defenses to the non-compete, uh, non-competes often fall in some sort of gray area where they may or may not be enforced by a court. Getting to a court, like getting to to the judge and actually have a judge determining whether your non-compete is enforceable takes tons of time and tons of money such that like even if it's kind of a coin flip whether it's enforceable or not it's probably going to be enforced in practice because of how hard it is to push back so i would take the non-compete it's usually based on location distance and time okay you want it to be based on one location some non-competes will say every location that the employer has and it's like how many bubbles on a map am i going to have to draw so if they expand maybe they merge with somebody else all these healthcare employers merge with each other right so you want to have one location as the bubble that you need to draw on a map